Right, so today's chosen topic is about Natil Shadayim. And Natil Shadayim is one of the seven mitzvahs of the Rabbonon, which means we've got seven mitzvahs, which we say, Asheket Shonu B'mitzvahs of Bitsivonu, and they are Midrabonon, and they are Rosh Hashanah is No B'simcha, Nun Ayin B'simcha, Nun stands for Natil Shadayim, Ayin stands for Eruvin, Beis stands for Brochus, the Brochus which you make on foods or on mitzvahs, Sin stands for Shabbos, and it's near Shabbos. Mem stands for Megillah, Ches for Hanukkah, and He stands for Hal. So we've got the seven mitzvahs that are bonon, and so one of them is um, Natil Shadaim, and this is attributed to Shloima HaMelech, and it's got to do with the idea of communicating Truma to food, particularly about people who eat Truma, but be that as it may, we have a mitzvah of Natil Shadaim, before we eat bread, and we, when we do so, we make a bracha shekit shalom b'mitzvah of sivonu al natil shedai. The idea of washing your hands exists in Torah also in the case of the koyanim before they do the avoido, so that we all know there's the kio where they would wash their hands and their feet before um, before bechas before doing the avoida in the bais and so. We also have Natil Shadaim in the morning. The question is, when we say Yadaim, does it mean to the, washing the fingers, or does it mean washing up until the wrist? And this is a discussion in the Gemara, and it may be in different halachas that the, the requirement is up until the wrist. But Natil Shadaim, this Uda, is also a question. The Maisa, we are Machmir. We take the stricter view, and we wash Natil Shadaim up until the wrist. And there's a famous Lash in the Gemara, Who's one of the Chachamim who says, I wash my hands with lots of water in a generous way. And Min HaShemayim, they give me a generous amount of bracha. In a sense, it's a hand-to-hand uh, relationship where we say, Perseyach es yodecho, or Mazbi alecho chayrots, and Hashem opens, we say, Hashem, open your hands and give us, in a generous way, give us bracha. By us being careful and being generous, in the way we do the mitzvah of Natsir Shadaim, so we are eliciting a bracha from the Ebershta to give it, he should hand us in a generous way. So, as I said, the Lemaise, we wash our hands not just until what we call the knuckles, but up until the wrist. That's how far we wash Natsir Shadaim, um, and that's true whether it's washing for bread or washing Natsir Shadaim in the morning. The exception is on Yom Kippur and Atishabov, where we have limitations on bathing on those two days when we wash the Natil Shadaim in the morning we wash only until the knuckles um, and then after Yom Kippur Tisha B'av is over then we wash again until the wrist to get rid of the Ruach Atuma etc. Uh, I don't remember what should be done if a person has to eat bread on Yom Kippur what the halacha is then should they wash till the wrist I don't remember that now if someone needs to know that ask closer to the time. Um, I'm just going to mute everyone. Mute all. Okay. Let's continue, yeah? I hope you can hear me. Let's continue. The next thing is that when you wash Matil Shaddai, it is like a tevila. And as you know, when a person goes to mikvah, they have to toil the whole body in one go. And similarly, if you have a keli and you want to dip it in a mikvah, let's use one of these long trays. You can't dip half of the mikvah and then dip the other half of the mikvah. It has to be all done in one go. Similarly, in Tishadayim is a kind of mikvah and your entire hand has to be washed in one go. So what would happen if you washed part of your hand, and then you look at your hand, hey, it's not all wet. Oh, I'll just wash that other bit also. I'll just pour, pour a bit of water. That doesn't work. It has to be all poured in one uninterrupted sequence. It doesn't have to be all in one go. As you pour over your hand, you may rotate your hand. You pour slowly and you move, rotate, rotate your hand in a way that the water should get all over your hand in one uninterrupted sequence. What happens if you wash your hands and as you are 
before you rub your hands, you look and some of your hand wasn't uh, washed. It's still dry. So here the halacha where the Alter Rebbe writes is, you don't have to wipe your hands again. You can just fill up your cup again and wash all over um, and do it, this time get, get it, do it properly, all the whole hand in one go. Having said that, generally, when we wash the Tzir Shadayim, we are particular that our hands should be dry. The reason for that is, the reason for why we, we well, because the Tzir Shadayim is a takona to purify our hands. Natil Shadayim does not work to purify something else. I'm going to digress for a moment. Do you know if food was left under a bed? It's a business of, of Ruach HaTumah. Yeah? You know this. So what happens if someone left an orange under a bed? Can they wash the orange negavasa? Wash three times, wash the, the, the orange. I've heard of people suggesting that kind of stuff, but it's, um, it's questionable. The mitzvah of Natil Shadayim was, is a method to purify hands, not to purify other stuff. So if you've got Tommy water, pouring kosher water onto Tommy water is not going to kosher that water. Okay, so therefore, I've got my, my hands are a little bit wet because I, I don't know, just came in from the rain. My hands are wet. So the water on my hands, because my hands are not washed, so my, my hands are Tommy, so the water is Tommy. By pouring the Tiyoshi Dime onto wet hands, that water remains Tommy because the Tiyoshi Dime can purify hands. It can't purify water. So, Lomdis, the, the issue here is that we normally make sure that our hands are dry before we wash Natiya Shadayim because the Natiya Shadayim will not purify the Tomei water which is on our hands from before. For this reason, for this reason it's Minig Chabad that especially uh, you know, people are, more, uh, are, are careful, Mahadar, to use a towel for Natiya Shadayim. Now typically you go over to the sink you put your hands on the, on the tap to, to uh, fill up your kvort. And what you call it, this is what I was brought up, the keli which you use for the tzir shadayim, you call the kvort. Probably means it's uh, the measure of a quart of two pints in, in, back in Russia. Uh, anyway, so you want to use the kvort, you want to fill it up, the tap is a bit wet. You touch the tap, and now you've got the, the moisture, you've got the west, wet, wet uh, on your, the water on your hands. So that water is Tommy. Uh, that, that presents a problem. So therefore, to avoid your having, as you say, loose uh, water on your hands before you wash into your dime, so you pick up the keli with a, with, a, with a towel. In that way, your hands are, your, your hands are dry before the, uh, the procedure of the mitzvah of the dime, which will purify your hands. Let's already go now. We're talking about this. Minik Chabad is... The velt is not to wash the tears down twice. In other words, when it comes to the tears down for a meal, to pour once, to pour water on the hands to purify the hands. And then you've got mayim shniim, which is to purify the water, which is on the, um, the tommy water. That's the minig of Ilo. Chabad have got a minig of washing the tears down for bread three times. And the reason for this is, as it mentioned, there's a whole story with the Rebbe Rashab, someone on the Chassidim saw him washing his hand three times. And he asked the Rebbe, why is he doing it three times for bread? I'm not talking about Negovas in the morning. That's for sure it's three times, everyone knows. But washing for bread is, uh, the belt is not to do it two times. And the Rebbe Rashab says he has a mocker, but he doesn't remember now. Later, the Rebbe Rashab remembers where he'd seen it. It's actually not in the dinner of Antil Shadayim. It's in the Meforshim, the dinner of, of salting meat. And salt meat, so after you've salted, then you have to wash, rinse it off. So the Bishyosa brings there from Agos Oshri, he brings that you should rinse it off three times. That you should rinse off the salt three times, like the minig is to wash your hands three times for bread. So the, the idea is that you sh should be a more thorough washing, that could be whatever. So our minig is that we wash until you die for bread, one, two, three, one, two, three. And but with the chassidim are, are generally knowing to be uh, careful to use a towel. And that is, as they say, to avoid having uh, loose water on your hand before you actually go through the procedure on the Tiyasi Dayim. Certainly you have to be careful when you pass from one hand to the other that the washed hand shouldn't be touching the unwashed hand um, or someone else's unwashed hand shouldn't touch your washed hand because then it's going to make the uh, water on your hand become tummy. Right, I'm going to go on to the next point and that is about 
the bracha. And what's the sequence? Now, generally, we have a seder of, of, of all mitzvahs. We first say the bracha, and then we do the mitzvah. Let's say, if you're going to put up a mezuzah, you say, mezuzah, and then you knock, up, then you knock in the nails, so you screw it in, and so on. But generally, there are, though, several exceptions. As you all know, when it comes Friday evening, when you bench licht, you're going to first light the candles, and then you say the bracha. But that's because of a technicality. That because uh, once you've said the bracha, perhaps it's already Shabbos for you. So you say first, you first light, and then you say the bracha afterwards. Now, actually, with the Tzil Shadim, it's also a technicality. If I've just scratched my hair, or I've just, just um, tied my shoelaces, whatever it may be, my hands are torn, mate. I shouldn't be saying a brach if I've just tied my shoes. I have to wash my hands. So now it becomes a bit circular. I've just tied my shoes, or uh, scratched my hair, and I want to say a bracha. So I have to wash my hands to say a bracha. Then I have to say a bracha before washing my hands. It doesn't work, you know? So therefore, because, because of this circular problem, so the minig is, that we first wash until Shadayim, and then we say the bracha. So not, as I say, normally the sequence should be, machshava dibor ma'isa, kavona, what I'm going to do, dibor is the bracha, and then the ma'isa of the mitzvah. But there are a few exceptions, and until Shadayim and in the Neos Shabbos are the exceptions to this rule. You're first going to do the act, and then say the bracha. So, number one, is important, just like you all know, that when you've said a bracha, to put up a mezuzah. In the middle of putting up a mezuzah, baruch hashem, mezuzah, hello, how are you, what's about what arrived in the mail today, and then you bang, bang, bang. And you say that, yeah? That's not okay. You're not allowed to interrupt between the bracha and the, and the action. Similarly, the other way around. When you're brachim, washing, just your daim, and then you can say the bracha. So the bracha has to be linked to the act. Therefore, you shouldn't really, you know, this is written in Poskim, as you wash it until Shadayim, you shouldn't be chatting about unrelated matters, um, whilst, even though you haven't said the bracha yet. On the contrary, because you don't want to interrupt between the bracha and the, and the deed. Now, what is the, talking aside, let's now say, what is the seder? So we have, Three, three actions. We have the action of washing with water. We also have an action of rubbing, shif shuf hayodayim, to make sure, you know, some like, like, like when you wash uh, for hygiene, you rub your hands to make sure that in case there's something, uh, some sh schmutz there, it's going to be picked off, you know, going to be removed. So same thing after tissue dime, you wash your hands with water, then you rub your hands, and then you say, then you dry your hands with a towel. And the drying of the hands is actually quite important, la locha. And it says in the Gemara, there's a postuk, al kein yoichul of nei Yisrael is lach mum tome. It's a postuk in Yecheskel, I believe, about eating their bread tome. And the Gemara says, ha'oichel beloi netil shadayim. Sorry, ha'oichel beloi nigov yadayim. Ha'oichel who wants to eat without drying his hands is as if he's eating tome bread. What's wrong with having your hands wet when you're eating bread? So one level is that it's a bit mius, it's a bit, um, how do you say, despicable, because bread is meant to be dry, and soggy sandwiches, for example, are not very appealing, yeah? So by, you have a mitzvah to wash your hands, but make sure your hands are dry before you handle your bread. Or part of the procedure of cleaning your hands is also wiping, because the shlemus of the cleanliness of the hands will be achieved by using a towel and will thoroughly remove any residue which of, of the uh, schmutz which you may have had before. Be that as it may, so the wiping of the hands is part of the mitzvah of the Tzir So although for technical reasons as described, we cannot say the bracha before washing, we do make a point of making the bracha before the rubbing and particularly before the drying. Because it's, it's as if I'm making the bracha before I finish the mitzvah. Okay? So that's the seder. So the, uh, let's go, what's the seder then? You wash your hands, and you then say the bracha, and at the same time you're rubbing your hands, and then you go and dry your, dry your hands. This is true for natil shadayim for bread. By contrast, natil shadayim in the morning, 
So there our meaning is different. There you wash your hands, dry your hands, and then you say the bracha and the So I'll repeat that. The tilsidaim for a meal, the bracha is said before wiping your hands. The tilsidaim in the morning, with the morning brachas, you finish off with washing and drying, and only then do you say the bracha. Let's not get sidetracked to that, but that's the sequence over here. But your dime for the meal, for the bread, the broch is said before you wipe your hands. Now, the next thing on my, on my list is the point called chatzitza. Now, for sure, for sure, the people listening here, I don't have to explain what a chatzitza is. It's, uh, the word chatzitza comes from the word like the same word as mechitza, a divide, and it's an obstruction which doesn't allow the water to come into contact with the, with, the, with the flesh, with the skin. And so just like for mikvah, chatzitz is a problem. Similarly, for the til shadaim, chatzitz is a problem. And therefore, generally, women will remove their rings before doing the til shadaim. And if there's a plastic, it becomes a problem. The issue here is that the water cannot get there. Now, what about nail polish? So the concept of chatzitz is a disturbing presence, an undesired presence. So long as the nail polish is in good condition, so on the contrary, you, you want it to be there, and therefore it's not a chatzitsa. Once that becomes an irritation, its presence irritates you, you don't want it to be there, then it, it morphs into a chatzitsa. And then you'd have a problem of Nisir Sudaim until you'd remove it. Um, right, now, the Gemara says that it's good advice that before a person eats a meal, they should first re use the bathroom to, to relieve themselves of what they had uh, from the previous meal. The Gemara uses a, a cute, um, perhaps crude marshal, like if you have a fireplace, you know, the, the old you know, 50, 60 years ago, we had fireplaces in the houses. So before putting in fresh coal, you first have to rake out the left, the, the burnt out ashes from yesterday's fire, and then you put in fresh fuel. So the same thing with our bodies, before we put in fresh uh, fuel to, uh, to, to function, if there's waste from yesterday's, from of the previous meals, so then first relieve yourself. So we have it here, it's an etiquette, that a person should, and we can, especially we should teach children this also, it's, it's uh, that to, <laughs> jumping up in the middle of a meal to run to use a toilet is, is, is really, really, it shouldn't be a normal thing. Oh, if a person has a problem, but generally it should, it should be avoided. Um, now, so now you, you use the toilet and you want now wash your hands after the toilet, which ends before saying ashiyatsa. And then you have to wash your hands for, uh, for bread. So now you have to wash your hands for two things. Can you, can you do them together? And the way the Alter Rebbe writes it, said you can. I don't know whether he recommends it, but he says you can. And then um, he says the following. You could wash your hands once. One, two, three, one, two, three. No, the one, two, like for, 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 like for a meal. One, uh, three on right hand, three on the left hand. And then you'd say the bracha on and Then you wipe your hands. And then you'd say the bracha shiotza. And then you'd say ah, you're going to say ah, is a hefzig between the tils yadayim and Hamoitzi, the Alter Rebbe says it's not such a hefzik because the etiquette of relieving yourself um, be, before the meal is, is kind of relevant to the meal. It's not an, an unrelated thing. Therefore, the Alter Rebbe says you could do that. If you don't want to do that, then you'd have to wash once for cleanliness and say, I'm Asher Yotzar. You have to wipe your hands well. And then you'd have to wash your hands a second time, um, which is... Has, it has its questions in, uh, to, to it. But this, is, this is one way you could do. Right. Um, I might be repeating something which we had in not so long ago uh, because we had a, a session on taking Halakha on holidays. That was about two weeks ago. Seawater. Seawater is invalid for Nathil Sudai. Because the water for Natil Sudaim has to be drinkable. And therefore, to go, if you're at the beach, and to go over to the seafront, to the water, and to scoop up a, a, a bucket or whatever and use that for Natil Sudaim is invalid because it has to be drinkable water. 
Alternatively, you could, if you didn't have any other water, you could dip your hands in the sea as a mikveh, and then you'd say, instead of saying, you'd say, Bruch al Shtifas Yodai. So you can, that's an alternative. Now, two things. Since I'm coming up with this, I was, a number of years ago, I went to, with my children to Eretz Yisrael, and there were the two older ones, and we also stopped off in Tveria, we sort of came up with a round bum, etc. We also stopped outside a hotel, and there was this pool, which is boiling water. It was like amazing. It was posh at boiling water. Um, I, like you couldn't keep your hand in it. It's Mahmoud's very, very hot water. It's like, because Tveria has got these natural hot springs. Uh, it was too hot for us to dip our hands in. It was like boiling. But how about taking some of that water and using, wait for it to cool down and then to use it because the hotels didn't let us in um, because, you know, we are scraggly uh, you know, travelers. So, um, where do you wash in Chisidain? So, could you take water from that pool and use it for the Teal And uh, I wasn't aware at the time, but the halach is that it's not valid because the water of Tveria has got a sulfur to it. It's got a sulfuric taste, and as a result, it's not drinkable. So, the water of Tveria uh, may have other very beautiful and uh, healing qualities, but for the Teal it's not valid because the water from the Tia Sadaim has, has to be drinkable. Now, I want to share with you another interesting thing. Um, perhaps the last uh, lesson we were talking about, when we talked about this, um, can you dip your hands in a river? Or is a river kosher mikvah? So, generally, rivers should be kosher mikvahs, so even though they're flowing and it has to be static. Okay, but I raised the problem that sometimes rivers have got dams upstream, and the dam is, means that it's like for generating electricity, so it's got these turbines. So, uh, and that means all the water which comes downstream has gone through the turbines, turbines being kalim, has made all the water, Maim Shu'uvin, has disqualified them for mikvah. So it's not so posh to use as a river for a mikvah, whether it's for to be last Noshim or to be last kalim, it's not so posh. So I had a trailer. Um, someone asked me, sent me a, a, a WhatsApp picture of a river. I said, and I asked I, the woman on holiday and asking, can she use this for mikvah? And I said, is that, it looked to me like a sea. So she says, no, it's a river. So which river is it? So the river is in Annapolis. I've never heard of it. I looked it up. Um, Annapolis, if you know where Nova Scotia is, and um, so it's on the east of Canada. You fly over it as you come in from America to uh, from England to America. So this uh, in Nova Scotia has got this Annapolis River, which is flowing north to north to south. So I, I googled this river, and it's, there is Takia Water Dam. There's an electricity dam at a particular point, and above that is like a nature reservoir. So I was able to respond and say, listen. If you're on holiday over there, if it's north of this and this place, you can use that place for the river as a mikvah. If it's south of that place, you cannot use it as a mikvah. All right, so let's go on. So um, let's go on. Oh. Can you use a kali with a spout for, for the Tiel Shadaim? Can you see I've got here in front of you, I've got this, um, called, perhaps they call it a gravy boat or something. Can you use such a thing for the tears die? What is, let's explain, what is the problem? You're I'm sure many of you are familiar, but to use a Kaylee with a spout is not valid for the tears die. And I want to explain what's the problem. You can see here the drawing. So we've got here a jug. And the jug has got a spout. And the spout is higher. It's, it juts out higher than the jug. That is where the problem is. Now, let's take a look at the, at the drawing. When you pour an etil shodayim from the spout, the, air, the, the spout is not called a keili because the spout is higher than the, the jug. So the, the spout part is not called a keili. So now when the water pours onto your hand, if the spout weren't there, it would miss your hand. If the drawing is not accurate, it doesn't matter. But that's the, the concept, you, know, if you understand. If the spout juts out another inch, 
beyond the Kairi. And because of that inch, that's why the water got to your hand. So then you washed your hands, not from Kaili, but from, from a spout, not from a Kaili. So here, here the, the uh, spout is not really much higher, so it's quite marginal. Let's say if you had a jug, like you have some measuring cups, where the spout is much level with the rest of the jug. Then you can wash the tears you're dying from that Kaili without a problem. Well, from the spout or not. Even in this one, even let's say the spout here is higher. So I mustn't pour the tears dying from this part, but I am allowed to use the rest of the jug for the tears dying. That's no problem. The rest of the jug is a kosher, is a, is a Kaili, and therefore you'd be able to wash the tears dying from the jug. It's only where, when the spout is higher up and you're pouring via the spout, that's where you cannot use it for Natir Sudaim. Now, many of you have learned Natir Sudaim in Shulchan Aruch, in Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch, and probably those who are teaching, um, one, probably one of the important things that we teach in schools is to learn the Dinah Natir Sudaim in Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch. It does have mention in Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch of using a tap and releasing, turning a tap, and the first gush which comes out of the tap is called is 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 called Kayach Odom, and that's kosher for Nutir Shadai. What I want to say here is that is a little bit of a uh, this deceiving, because the tap which Reb Shlomo Gansfried was talking about 150, 180 years ago was a tap to a water butt, a, a tap to a, a keli. Nutir Shadai has to be from a keli. The reason why the broch is a sheket shon v'tzvayse v'tzivonu al natilas yodayim, not al rechitzas yodayim, or al nikoyin ha yodayim, because one of the reasons is the word natilo is a remez to a keli, and this was called in Aramaic, whatever they called as a natlo. So to, uh, to remind people that this mitzvah of washing your hands has to be with a keli, they coined the broch al natilas yodayim, has to be from a keli. So when you have here a water butt, a Shabbos kettle, let's say, which is cold, yeah? And you release the, the faucet and water, water comes out, you've washed your hand. The first gush has been, you have released the energy uh, uh, from the cave. That's kosher. But when you open the tap in your kitchen sink, there's no Kaylee behind your tap. You've got a, a water, you're coming for the water mains, whatever. Um, I don't know whether you've got a water tank in your house, but if, you know, if it's just the water, the mains, there's no Kaili behind there. So therefore, it's not, not valid. So this I want to clarify. That although you read in Kitsa Shikhanor, that you could do the Tia Shadayim by the first gush of releasing a tap, that does not apply with the kitchen taps in, you know, whatever the taps in our, in our houses. Where would it apply? Let's say you're on National Express coach or on the airplane or on a, whatever it may be, uh, on a train. And there, they suck a tank, obviously. But there, it doesn't work in any case, because there, the first, the, 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 the gush is much weaker. So the first, first gush is not going to be enough to cover your hand. So right, is not going to work. So really, um, this, this, uh, this method of opening a tap should be understood that it's not really applicable for us, in most cases. Now, let's go on to another point. Can you use a bottle for Natil Shaddai? And you may have read in some places that you cannot use a bottle. This is a, perhaps a machalok is a poskim. Does the Tilsi Daim have to be done in one shot? Or can it be, does it have to be in one sequence? I said this before, it has to be in one sequence. It doesn't have to be in one shot. And therefore, those who say it has to be in one shot, say you can't do from a bottle. Because the pouring from a bottle won't pour you all over your whole hand in one, in, in one shot. The Altareb is quite clear, it doesn't have to be in one shot. It has to be in one sequence. So if you are able to hold a bottle um, in a way that it's going to be a continual flow, which means you have to hold it at an angle that there's air can come in and the water comes out, then you can slowly pour over your hand as long as it's one uninterrupted sequence that is valid for Natila Sudai. Now, let's go on to another point. Now, Natila Sudai is... Because you've been around the house, around the streets, and you've touched things possibly, so you start with the expression is stam yadayim 
to mayors. By default, we assume that your hands have come into contact with, with grimy stuff, whether it's you know, the, this, the uh, how do you say, the, under your scalp, how do you say, on the, 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 the grease, or under your, under your clothing, where you've got this sweat, or whether you touch your shoelaces, or whatever it may be. So it, it stamp your diet. What happens if a person needs to use the toilet in the middle of a meal? So the whole reason for the Tiel Shadayim is because you've, you have, may have come into contact with, a, with, with something which is, which is dirty. If you're using the toilet during a meal, so the likelihood is that you've touched something which is an area which is normally covered, and therefore that invalidates you in the Tiel Shadayim. So for sure, when you come out, you have to wash the Tiel Shadayim again. So again, if a person uses the toilet in the middle of a meal, so when they come back, they have to wash until time again. Now, um, same is true. Let's say if you are a mother or a, a, a carer of a child, and a child needs to have a nappy changed, and so you did so. So for sure, you, when, you, when you come back to continue your meal, of course, you'll wash your hands with soap. But besides that, you have to wash until you time again. No question, because the whole reason for the till you time is in case you touched something schmutzig, something dirty, so when you come back, you have to make... Now, here's a big, a big Kiddush of the Alter Rebbe, but generally the post can also say this, um, that the minhig is that when you come back after the toilet, after having to, you, that you don't make a bracha again. The Swara would have said, you have to do it again, you have to make a new bracha. But the minhig of the is, of not making a new bracha, it's as if you kind of... Um, revive the original washing, however the chart is, and so you do have to wash until your dime the full full way, um, but uh, you would not make a bracha. I saw on the chat someone asked a question about removing rings. So the, the general perception is, the general meaning I believe, is that women do remove their rings whenever they wash until your dime, because they, uh, the understanding is that when a woman would, let's say, make dough, she'd need the dough, she would remove, remove her rings. So there are occasions where you remo remove your rings, therefore they should re be removed for the Tiyosha Daim also. There are, there are grounds to be makele and say that you, it's like you, you want it to be there. It's like, and so perhaps, possibly but the Eved, you would not have to, I didn't look it up today, so probably the Eved, you wouldn't have to um, uh, make a new brocha, Etc. Now, um, but the Chatechila, I believe the minig is to, to remove your rings. Just make sure you put them in a safe place. And um, yeah. Next, I mentioned at the beginning that the re the reason for Shloim Hamelech for instituting the concept of Nitzir Sadaim has got to do with tumma, tumma of food, not to Communicate too much to food that when you have stam your daim, you'll touch the food, you make the food tommy. There is a concept that for food which is tommy to spread tuma to another food, it's only if that food has the the size of an egg. Again. In order, a food can become tummy, and then in order to share the tumor to something else, if it's a tiny uh, quantity, a tiny amount, it's not strong enough to kind of to absorb and to com contaminate further. If it's food the size of an egg, then it is able to take tumor and to spread tumor. Because of this, which normally the whole the whole area of tumma batara unfortunately is is not so familiar because it's not terribly you know relevant. Uh, it says in the times of Chizkiyo Melach Yehuda, so they they searched and they surveyed Midon Ve'ad Be'er Sheva, the entire the entire uh, the, the entire Jewish population. Every child was proficient in the uh, the halachas of Tara. It was relevant then, Lamaisa. So there was that proficiency. Don't expect people today to have that, that proficiency in the name of Tumabatara. 
be that as it may, there is such a svara, which is brought in Shukhanara, that Rebus brings it, that if you're eating less than a kabetza of bread, less than the volume of an egg of bread, so then you should, you should, you don't need to make an etzios yadayim, and because of a sofit, you would not make a bracha. Practically speaking, if you're having less than one slice of bread, it can be, sometimes people are quite uh, careful how much they're eating. If you're having less than one, some people say kazais, that one slice of bread is a kazais. That's because they're working with, with weight. A kazais uh, has got a weight, let's say, of an ounce, and one slice is about an ounce. So they look at one, one slice of bread being, uh, being a kazais. The truth be told, that actually the shiurim are not in weight, or they are in volume, and you don't have to compress it. And because of this, that's why I'm saying it is carefully, that actually a average slice of bread, or let's say on a square loaf, is probably uh, more than the volume of an egg. And so if you're having less than that, so then you should wash the tis yadayim without a bracha. The Alter Rebbe mentions this in the Siddur, he says, particularly when it comes to shalashudas, I mean, you know, we get into shall should as we start, you know, especially if it's not been a long day, so you're not so hungry, so you have you're gonna have less bread. So he says you'd be the particular, make sure if you make your brocha on this day, make sure you had you're gonna have a a, a, a kabetza of bread. Now with uh, when we had the shall should us and shul, we were having matzas. And the matzas would say one one machine matza would be a kazais, so you'd have to have two machine matzas in order to have a so in order to be able to make a brocha to Sudai. If you have less than than uh, than a kabetzo, as they say, you should wash into Sudaim, but without making a brocha of al Sudai. Let me just go to the chat. I saw there was a question here. If you have a plaster, right. Okay. Um, very good. So going back to the dinim of chatzitzo, and we said you don't want to have an interruption between the water and your skin. If it's something which doesn't bother you, then it's not a chatzit. So let's, couple, let's spend a couple of minutes, we have the time. If something which doesn't bother you, so we said, let's say you've got polished nails, that the varnish there doesn't bother you. On the contrary, you paid a lot of money to have it there. So that's not a chatzit. If you are a painter, and so you've got now dots of paint on your, on your fingers, well, it doesn't bother you on the contrary. You know, people see dots of paint on your fingers. Are oh, you a painter at house decorator? For sure, can I give you a job? So it's a good advertisement, yeah? Uh, but for most of us who aren't professional house painters, so dots of paint on our, on our hands are a nuisance. They bother us. And therefore, they present a chatzitza. So there we have a problem of a chatzitza that, if that, that you, you wouldn't be able to wash into your dime if they, with those dots of paint because they're inter, inter, interruptions. Now, what about, let's say, you've been peeling, you've been peeling, um, You've been peeling uh, beetroots, and then once you're finished, your hands are all red, and you wash with soap, etc. So then, if it's just a color and not a tangible presence, in other words, you put pass your finger on it, or your nails on it, you can't feel. It's not like drop dots of paint which you can feel. It's a it's a presence there. Here is just if it's just absorbed in the, a color absorbed in the skin, it is not a chatzitz. Coming back to the decorator, if you are a car mechanic and your hands are full of uh, black grease and you wash your hands as well as you can, but there's still going to be traces which you can't remove, that's for a car mechanic, that's not a chatitza. But for fellows like myself, who uh, uh, I'm not very good at mechanics, uh, car mechanics, so then th 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 that grease would be a chatitza. Again, if it's just a presence, not, but not tangible presence, then, then it would still be able to make a bracha. Now, I'm going to go to the chat again. Um, someone asking, can you, uh, what do you do about washing for bread with a removable cast? So let's deal with the plasters for the moment, yeah? So if you have a bleeding um, a wound and you put on a plaster, so then you want the plaster there, so it's not really a chatitza, and therefore, theoretically, you could wash your whole hand and leave the plaster in place. The common minhag is to, to kind of cover at least that finger. Some people put a glove on their hand, or to at least to cover that finger 
so that uh, you're not touching the food with an unwashed uh, finger. That's the best you can do. If a person has got a cast, the, uh, if it's covering the palm, but the fingers are, are visible, are, are protruding for the cast, then, as I said right at the beginning, we had this discussion, the main natilis of dime is actually the fingers. And therefore, if you can wash the fingers, that would be fine. Okay, now um, I've got two more points. I can see there's lots of busy um, questions here, but let's first deal with the points which I have on my list, then if we have time, we'll go to those, and if I know the answer. The next thing on my list is, if you have food dipped in liquid, you'll know that this, on the Seder night, the second item on the agenda is Urchat. We go and wash our hands, and that is because we're going to dip the carapace into the salt water. And there's a concept called tibuloi bamashke, when food is dipped into a liquid, um, which would make it more prone to tumor, there's, there's a takonos chachomim of washing your hands before doing so. Some say that nowadays, because it's largely the dinim of atar are obsolete, therefore it's not necessary. Therefore, some people are not so particular about this. But Chassidim, we are particular about this. Um, you may know, this is, and this for me was a Chiddush, but you may know that whilst by our minig is, by Urchatz, everyone gets up to wash, many Yidin, it's only the leader of the Seder washes by Urchatz, and everyone else stays put. Now they take the view that the Urchatz is a Lifnim Mishur Sadin, and it's only done on Pesach night, and the rest of the are not particular, but Chassidim, we are particular, Therefore, let's say picking up, let's say to eat pickles, pickle cucumbers, which are wet, we, we, with your fingers, we, don't, we would avoid that. And let's say dipping a biscuit in your coffee, we'd avoid that. Um, Rosh Hashanah, we dip the apple in the honey, yeah? But that is done after the Tisha Daim. So that's not such a problem because you've already washed the Tisha Daim. But let's say having, uh, dipping something in honey, uh, is honey called a liquid? So generally we think honey is one of the seven liquids, which are recognized as liquids in halacha. However, that's not so posh because a lot of the honey is used actually not for drinking, but for, for uh, cooking and making, food, making solids, making foods, making cakes, whatever it may be. So um, I wouldn't, certainly if it's, um, so I, I wouldn't say for with confidence that every dipping in honey requires nitil shadai, but uh, okay. So you've got these seven liquids, if you, in milk, etc. Um, oil is only olive oil is an issue. So let's say you've fried chips and they're still uh, wet from, from sunflower oil. That's not a problem because sunflower oil doesn't count as one of the shiva mashkim. Um, but let's say a piece of chicken which is cooked and you want to, you know, no one else is looking, you want to eat the chicken with your fingers. So then that would be an issue of tibrilla bimashke because a food which is wet with water or um, so then we wouldn't uh, eat it without washing the hands without a brach. As I said, it's a machloek, it's a possible that applies today. So we're doing it till you're dying, putting bullet bimashke without a bracha. Right, um, let's now take a look at these questions. Someone is writing here, I didn't really get this question. So if I find someone writes like this, um, I'm finding it difficult to remove my rings every time I need to wash until you're dying. For bread, I always take them off. As a busy mother, I'm wanting to make sure I wash my hands every time I need, I have been keeping my rings on. Okay. If, what, what I would say is like this. If you're asking about after using the toilet, um, there's no mitzvah but until you're dying there as such, no bracha, and therefore it doesn't, you don't have to remove your rings for washing after using the toilet. But if you are talking about until you're dying in the morning, when you get up, and after wash negovasa, and you wash your second time, uh, and then you're going to make a bracha until you're dying, for that washing, you should also remove your rings. Um, yeah. The next point which I have here on the question is, someone asking here, what about a um, Rivita? Do you need to wash Negelvasa, or you mean Natasha Dain, for Rivita? Um, I don't remember exactly uh, why, why should Rivita be different to a regular matzah? Uh, it has, is it not made with flour and water? If it's flour and water, then it's Hamoidzi. Now, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You might see, let's see, on the tea crackers, it says on it, 
it says on the tea crackers, some of them it says the bracha is mezainus. And I want to explain to you something. It says in the in Shukhan Gemara, a pasa boba kisnin is mezainus. There are three opinions about pasa boba kisnin. One says it means a, a nibble bread, a thing which you have as a snack. Another one says it's a bread which is like a pouch, which is filled with sweet stuff, like a strudel. There's a third opinion, which says, or high go, and he says that Pasa Baba Kistin means, he uses the word kachin, which means a thin cracker. So this is brought in Shukhan Aruch. The Alter Rebbe in the Siddur does not mention this. So you know that the Svardim have a meaning that the whole year round, they are the matzah, what we have a whole year, um, the matzahs, they make mazonus, because it's what Rav Haigon says, this is a kachin. Ashkenazim don't follow that. And what we're saying is that since you are having it as a meal, especially nowadays that are, we are on Pesach, this is the staple meal, I mean, the staple, staple of the food for Hamoitzi, therefore it becomes a bread. Now, therefore, I'm not very happy with this making a mazonus on a matzah, on a, on a square cracker. I don't see the difference. I have yet to be convinced. Where do you draw the line? If it's five inch square, it's a moitzi. And if it's two and a half inch square, it's a mazonus. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm uncomfortable with that. So now, when you ask about Raivita, is Raivita a kind of thing you'll have for a meal? If it's not, if it's something like a pretzel, no one has pretzels for lunch, I think. So then for a pretzel, I would say it's mazonus. But is Raivita a thing which you'd have for a meal? Then it becomes an issue of how much. If it's a thing which you would never have as a meal, just as a snack, then it would be a um, mosaic. Now, um, someone's asking, can you use a hand dryer? Very good question. I mentioned before about the importance of drying your hands, of being part of the mitzvah. It is preferable to use a towel. If no towel is available or no clean towel is available, then a hand dryer would be okay because you're, at the end of the day is when you come to touch the bread, your hands are going to be dry. It, there would be a mile to use actually a, a physical um, a towel. Someone I hear it asks a question after swimming, there's no Kaylee. Can I open and close the tap six times? Um, listen, um, that's the best you can do. I would still say uh, when you come home, wash with a Kaylee. You, after, you should wash Negelvasa after using the swimming pool, but you should, um, yeah, uh, washing under the tap six times doesn't really count as Negelvasa. You can perhaps get one of these folding cups, these collapsible cups, keep it in your, in your uh, kit, and so when you come out, you'll have your Kaylee with you. Right. Um, that's, I'm going to, we're almost uh, done. Someone writes to me, is made from a liquid poured into a mold? I'm not sure what the question is, but I'm going to guess. I'm going to, I think the question is, what is the definition of a liquid? And I've asked this question myself many years ago. We asked Diane Friedman, let's say we've said dipping, dipping crackers into milk is tibula mimash, you need to wash until you die. What about something like yogurt? Dipping a crack into something like yogurt uh, or like a, like a thicker liquid. Where do you draw the line? Is that a liquid or is it a food? And the way he, um, Diane Friedman told me at the time, and probably written more than I'm wrong, uh, I think so. And if it's something that when you put it through your mouth, before swallowing, you have to kind of move around with your tongue to help you swallow it, that's not called a liquid. A liquid is something which you pour and you can swallow it straight away. So with yogurt, I would say if it's still set, so then it's be not, it would not be called a liquid. If you shake up the yogurt, it becomes runny, and then it does become a liquid, and that would make a difference whether you should wash it to dime before dipping stuff in it. One very last point, which we have here on my list, and that is, is there a header to avoid the tears you're dying by using gloves or by holding the, the bread inside a, uh, a plastic bag or a paper bag? So there is such an opinion, very much discouraged. The Alter Rebbe is very much discouraging not to rely on this opinion that Nitzias Yadayim can be done with, uh, that you can avoid Nitzias Yadayim by holding the, uh, the bread with a cloth and should avoid this. Of course, if you have absolutely no, no uh, option, there's no water available uh, and 
and you're hungry and you etc so of course that would be uh, that would be done but it's certainly not a, an advised uh, an advised thing um, okay um, someone put a question from where do you get these collapsible cups? Um, some one of my children. Uh, <laughs> that's as much as I can tell you. They, they know that I'm interested in this kind of uh, shtick. So, all right. I wish you all have a very good day and uh, Zaitalagism.